Welcome to panel four with SAC for Black History Month 2022. Today's panel is titled How to Stay Creative, Motivated, and Connected with Other Music Creators and also yourself. The land we are standing on today is the traditional territory of many nations, including the Mississaugas of the Credit, the Anishinaabe, the Chippewa, the Haudenosaunee, and the Wendat peoples, and is now home to many diverse First Nations, Inuit, and Métis people. We also acknowledge that Toronto is covered by Treaty 13, signed with the Mississaugas of the Credit, and the Williams Treaty signed with multiple Mississaugas and Chippewa bands. Today, we have panelists Marlon Palmer of the Extra Gravy podcast. We have Denise Dion, producer, Tanisha Clark, also a producer, and Byram Joseph, another producer. Songwriters Association Canada will be celebrating 40 years next year. Songwriters Association of Canada nurtures, develops, and protects the creative business and legal interests of music creators in Canada and around the world. Three of the most important tenants representing SAC's work are education, advocacy, and community. We'll be focusing on these throughout this year's panels and today's panel, and we want to ensure that these messages are delivered today. Thank you so much for being here. Let's begin. With Bell Talks launching this year's campaign just a few short weeks ago, we chose to work with a group of creatives like we have today to stand up for creative, um, creative autonomy, motivation, uh, collaboration, and connectedness, connectivity. Uh, everyone on this panel today has worked with multiple Black music creators or creators across Canada and also within Ontario. And we'd like to have everyone sit down and talk about what it took to stay creative and motivated during this lockdown, because for creatives uh, working, let's say, outside, doing live shows, uh, putting together music, working on albums, it was really, really tough. So, you know, we wanna have a more vulnerable conversation about how they pulled through any tips and tricks that they used to be able to stay motivated or keep the, their creativity fresh. I want everyone one by one to introduce themselves so that other music creators or creatives can know exactly who you are. Um, let's, we have here, uh, Denise. Hello, Denise. Hi. 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 How are you? I'm very good, thank you, welcome. Thank you, thank you for having me. And uh, <laughs> um, so my name is Denise Dion. I am a producer, artist, songwriter uh, from Toronto and I've been doing this for 10 plus years. My genres are R&B, pop, you know, trap, hip hop, anything that really gets you moving. Um, I've had the opportunity to get a, like, at, at least in the last couple of years, a lot of like some sync placements, had some music on Netflix, uh, some YouTube series, uh, Kim's Convenience. And uh, most recently I was working with uh, Bacardi for their Music Liberates Music campaign and uh, also partnered with Boy Wanda and yeah. Wonderful, thank you, thank you, thank you. And uh, Tanisha? Hey everyone, thank you for having me. Um, my name is Tanisha. I am a songwriter, singer from Toronto, from Scarborough. Um, I have been making music since I was around 12 years old. Um, I started off on a songwriting vocal arrangement, kind of just like co-writing and being around other creatives and working on their projects with them, singing background vocals, things like that. And then I progressed into writing my own music and releasing music and uh, actually dabbling in a bit of artist development and management and uh, recording studio uh, management. So that's kind of what I do. I kind of wear a lot of hats, but um, songwriting and singing is definitely my love. 
All right, thank you. Thank you for that. Welcome, welcome. And next we have Marlon Palmer. Marlon? Hey, how are you doing? Uh, my name is Marlon Palmer, aka That Dude McFly. Um, I'm an actor, comedian, podcast host. Um, I also curate an event uh, called Midnight Society, where every Thursday at midnight, we listen to the newest music drops fresh off the release. Um, in conjunction with Red Bull Gaming Studio, we're going to be doing that um, moving forward in the future. Uh, I have Extra Gravy podcast that I host and is dropped every Wednesday morning, where we discuss pop culture. Um, I have Extra Gravy Comedy, which is a once a month stand up comedy show at the Libertine, second week of one, second Wednesday of every month. And yeah. Wonderful. Thank you, Marlon. Welcome. And Byram. Hello, hello. Can everybody hear me? Yes. Okay. So, yes. Yeah, so, my, yeah, the government name is Byram Joseph, but I'm professionally known as B Child or, um, previously slack of the b child i'm an artist producer songwriter and uh i you know i specialize in production and, and mixing um been doing it for over 20 years i uh, started off as an artist but quickly fell in love with producing and my first major release was actually like a producer album that featured uh drake featured divine brown uh and uh, many other really talented uh, Canadian artists. And um, I released several other records, been able to tour the world, worked with many artists ranging various genres. And um, my current studio is located in Hamilton. We, we moved out of the city uh, a couple of years ago. And uh, yeah, just been keeping busy with various projects, whether it's my own solo releases or uh, helping other artists um, polish their their products or education. I've been doing some work with Coalition's um, Canada's Music Incubator, which is a great program that helps uh, develop uh, artists. So I've been doing some mentorship things with them for the past uh, six, seven years. All right, thank you so much. Welcome everyone, welcome. Um, you know, we're now in 2022 and there's tons of things going on globally. Um, but I, you know, I think everyone in the music creator community can say that, or any creative can say that things were a, a shock in terms of either work, uh, movement, creation, uh, creative works development. Can any of you um, kind of bring up some sentiments about what it was like maybe in 2020 for you creatively or um, business-wise? Because I, I want other creators to know like it's not just um, them, it's everyone. Everyone was affected by this. And everyone can speak. Yeah, go ahead, sir. I think we're all, well. We're all black here, so um, I think we all know what it's like to pivot and be resilient. And I think that it translates creatively as well. For me, at least, um, I I looked at it as an opportunity to do something different. And uh, we did virtual shows. We did live shows. We did live parties. We did picnic podcasts. Like anything we could to uh, continue being creative and still put out a product people would like. Um, and yeah, just, I, th I think it was a good time to stay still and, st and stay present as well. It was a good time to lock in with yourself, uh, and have some introspection. But other than that, I just think it was a good time to just pivot and try something new and maybe add something to your repertoire that you didn't know you would ever need had right. that moment not come up. Did you add anything to your repertoire? Uh, stand up. I, I wrote so much stand up uh, during mm -hmm. the pandemic, and now I'm I'm getting to finally <laughs> do them on stage. So, okay. yeah, a lot of time to prep for the reopening, basically. Right, right. Nice, nice. That's an excellent way to look at it. An operation to do an opportunity to do something different. Okay, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I agree with uh, I agree with Marlon. Um, it was a perfect time to kind of like, we had a lot of time on our hands initially, right? When 
everything started shutting down. Um, so it was a good time to kind of like figure out yourself, um, prioritize too, because like as important as our work is to us, there's other things that are equally, if not more important. And I think sometimes it's easy to get caught up in the industry, mm-hmm. you know, caught up with your own like image and brand and blah, blah, blah. And, and, but then all of a sudden, all those things weren't as important. And I think that was actually healthy for a lot of people. Yeah. It was it like kind of forced everyone to like focus on their own like mental health, their own goals and like what it really means, what what their job title really means, you know? Mm-hmm. Um, and, and for me personally, uh, I had started doing a little bit of mixing because I mainly do music production songwriting um and i love mixing my own stuff but typically i'd like outsource that Mm -hmm. if i'm producing a a record for somebody but um it really gave me the opportunity to focus more on offering mixing as a service which is something i can do remotely i don't need the artist to be there Mm -hmm. it's easy to do remotely so that's what i was able to pivot in um and i and now i've actually expanded it, it's allowed me to expand my business my music business um and you know give me time to to educate myself more in that lane and uh it's it's like i'm really busy now with that i have to kind of like make sure i don't get too busy with mixing because i still have to like write music and put out my own stuff right 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 nice nice i was just gonna say that i think like pre-pandemic we've all been kind of accustomed to this lifestyle of you know just the the, just continuously on the go on the go and we're doing so much for we were doing so much for other people and not really taking the time to truly truly like focus on ourselves and on on different levels you know what I mean because I think it was a time for me where I was like okay you know what I I got to really just you know maybe start meditating reading you know, mentally, just make sure that, you know, when I come out of this, I'm in a different space, in a good space. My, mind you, for me, I, I think my experience, once the pandemic hit, I I had already, I was living in Guelph for three years prior mm-hmm. to this. And if anybody's been to Guelph, there's nothing really going on in Guelph. So it was very much like I was in the thick of a pandemic anyways, and, you know, just not really having as much access to, you know, to the city and the on the go lifestyle. So I was already kind of accustomed to that. So when we shifted into everything kind of getting shut down, it didn't affect me as much as it did for a lot of people, but I still took it as an opportunity to really just focus on, focus on growth, you know, mm-hmm. for me as an artist, producer, and just continue to improve on my craft and my skills mm-hmm. so that, you know, when everything did open up, when we were finally in this place of being able to be around each other, that I felt in a good place with myself, that I didn't feel like I was out of place with other people. Right, right, right. Oh, nice. Okay, okay, good. Um, I definitely agree with everything that everyone said, or like a bit of all of it. At first, I think it was a little bit like, um, and I remember at the end of the 2019, I really got in the groove of doing like live shows. Um, I was performing a lot. And then the idea of virtual shows, like uh, to keep it 100, the whole digital thing has never really been my thing. Um, uh-huh. I'm like an in-person in real life interaction type of person. Um, I rather like book out venues and do things. So uh-huh. when it came to the digital shows, I was kind of like, mm. I'll set this one out. I'll wait till it's like back to, you know, regular schedule. Um, but obviously as it's been, you know, some time, what I would say I, I really learned to appreciate about it was when I first started music, um, I didn't have a lot of the luxuries that like we have now that we kind of take for granted. Um, like going to the studio, I work with some super dope engineers and like producers and the music just kind of like comes out like instantly, you know? Mm-hmm. And so when you're by yourself and you have like your own setup, I realized I had a lot of programs and things that I actually did 
didn't know how to use. I was yeah. so used to like engineers doing it for me or, or like, you know, I just send something out and then it comes back mixed and mastered and I'm like, amazing. Mm -hmm. um, so I really took the time to sit with myself and be like, yo, how do you like mix? How do you get your vocal chain to sound like how you want it to sound prior to even having to send it out to be mixed or whatever? Um, and I realized that that was kind of like how I started music uh -huh. um, was just like paper and pen writing the songs. I didn't have beats. I didn't have like all this studio and like all these effects and like all these things. We just had music in ourselves. Right. Um, so it really took me back to that place of like, yo, what's the message you want to talk about? Um, what are you feeling right now? Like how what how is the music going to impact the people listening? Um, so I would say for me right now is like I really taking myself on a journey songwriting wise I'm very excited about like my upcoming music because it's really like what I want to say not just like writing songs to write songs right. or like because you're in the studio and you can but because this is what you have to share um so yeah for me it's like taking it back to the the OG way of doing things right 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 well you, you gave us a nice segue now this is good so with us being songwriters association of Canada um we advocate for especially uh, royalties for songwriters uh, in Canada. And um, I want to ask you about writing specifically. Has any of, have any of your techniques changed? Has your writing changed? Has the material changed? Um, has your, um, have your efforts changed or has, uh, maybe the material or content that you're writing about, has any of that changed in the last two years so, or so? Um, absolutely for me, sorry, I, I feel like my mic was still on, so <laughs> just go ahead. Um, but for me, I started a Wild World project. I don't know, it, um, it was like 2016, I wanna say. Um, I got a much fat grant and I wrote this song called Wild World and it was to uh, lead off my project. And then as we started to get into the pandemic and things, I realized I didn't want to put out that project anymore. I wanted to actually expand on the, the wild world idea and write about what I was like going through at that time, because I felt like um, I had experienced more things that e equaled a wild world um, than I had when I actually started the idea. So it started off kind of like just about like a relationship and about like people and things. But then we went through so much like, uh, you know, as uh, people and just like in mm -hmm. as creatives that it really challenged me and pushed me to be like, what what else can you say? What else like, you know, dive a little deeper than than just like what meets the eye. Mm -hmm. um, so right now, actually, I'm working on a whole other rollout for Wild World that is like way larger and a lot. I'm more connected to it than I was when I first started the idea. So mm -hmm. I would say absolutely yes. Um, it has changed even how we work with other people has changed so like I'm so used to like uh, co-writing so usually I go out to sessions and, and write do arrangement and things with other artists but I've um, now been like writing full songs and sending it to them and be like yo how do you feel about this mm -hmm. um, and it's just you have a lot more control over what you're doing than just going into spaces and kind of vibing out with a lot of different ideas and people yeah. Um, so yes okay yeah no it nice changes. Expansion. Uh, Denise, or? tell you the honest truth. I've actually. Um, oh, yeah. Okay. Oh. How's your? Uh, how did your songwriting change or enhance or what do you do differently? Sorry, who's that question for? I think Byron was was about to say something. Yeah. Byron, you're gonna say something. Oh yeah, I was I was gonna say sorry if I cut you off. Um, um, the the pandemic has actually been a bit challenging for me to to, to be um, honest. You know, I'm used to being in the same room as someone when I'm doing the songwriting process, because to me that is such an integral part of songwriting is like that actual exchange of um, energy and that exchange of like you know because they say like communication is only like ten percent verbal, right? So when you're co-writing, all those like body, that body language and the facial expressions and, you know, how you walk around in a room, like those are really important cues when you're co-writing. <laughs> and I've done a few um, Zoom writing sessions and it just, it was just 
didn't have the same feel for me. So I, uh, I actually haven't done too many writing sessions. So that, that's been my biggest thing. I'm, I'm looking forward to this, this wave kind of dying down um, yeah. so that I can like take the opportunity before another wave comes to get in the room with some people yes. to just get some content out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, I was just going to say that, uh, like for me, like my role as, uh, it's beat maker as well as producer. So I think that because a lot of my, you know, relationships with creators, a lot of those are people in the States, for example, I've been very dependent on them sending me like packs, like send like musicians, for example, you know, send me a pack of like guitar riffs or loops, and then I'd work around that. Um, and, and that's something that, I mean, it's always been there because it's still, it's kind of like a form of sampling anyways. So it's always been there, but I think it's kind of like ramped up during the pandemic because people realize like, okay, you know, we don't have access to making music in the same way that we did before so i'm just gonna you know i'll just create some stuff i'll send it over to uh producer x and he'll add his sauce and you know it, and it's just become a lot more collaborative in that sense outside mm -hmm. of it just being in the studio mm -hmm. so i'm i'm actually having to kind of re myself to being in the room and creative with people again, because I've just been so used to like kind of doing things in that way in the last little bit. Um, but I, I, when I get in the studio and I'm able to vibe it out, like nothing, nothing compares to that. It's just a lot of magic that happens in the room that you, you can't, you can't replicate online, but you can still kind of figure out how to navigate it. Like I had a, a songwriting session, um, a virtual songwriting session, couple weeks back and you know me as the producer and then you know the other two were the writers I, I think I did a pretty pretty good job with just leading it in the way that we needed it to be led where you know they came up with some ideas they sent it to me we were sending stuff back and forth and I think also the the pandemic has been a really great time for artists who never were recording artists in their own kind of space to say to finally say you know what I'm going to get my own like equipment and I've always always been preaching this to artists and writers it doesn't have to be anything fancy but being able to self-record will save you a lot of time and you can just send ideas back and forth so that's what we were doing with the virtual session and yeah. we ended up you know coming up with the song so speaking of equipment I like I I didn't have a camera on my desktop I because I wouldn't sit at my computer ever I have a computer have a tablet I have stuff, but I never used it like that. And now being home, I had to get a camera. And this camera that I'm using is so, it's so clear. It like I, and I'm like, wow, like I, I never thought this was important before, but you know, it started to become more important as time progressed into 2020. So yeah, you're right about the equipment part. How about yourself, Marlon, um, writing? your material putting it together for us to watch online because it's yeah I think, I think for me my writing doesn't didn't necessarily change it was more so um the formats i guess like i uh, writing for stand-up is a lot different than writing edited script work um and it's something you can't really get a grasp of until you actually go on stage so even from a writing perspective, even if anything changed, I wouldn't even know yet until I get to go on stage and perform um, and do some of these bits. Uh, writing for the podcast, it stayed pretty much the same because it's just talking about what's happening in the culture. Um, and yeah, so for the most part, it's just more uh, more just educating myself on on different styles and different people and how they're releasing their uh, their product and seeing how we can make little changes to improve once things open up so like live shows for example um studying a lot of the different podcasts live shows and what they provide for entertainment before they do the live show um things that they put together with the ticket packaging and things like that um i think also in there was 
an opportunity to find alternative streams of income um, during the pandemic. Uh, so like for live streaming donations and tips, learning about that avenue as well as um, Patreon and, and taking advantage of Patreon and creating a community. I think those were our main concerns. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Nice. Okay, wonderful. Um, since now we talked about um, what the changes were in terms of how you do your work, I was going to ask if this is pertinent at all, because it's different, I guess, when it comes to, let's say, recording artists or, let's say, um, singers, vocalists. What, what was it like before getting gigs? And then now, not maybe not now, because everyone seems to be adapting slowly, but during the early, the first two years, like, was it different than before, especially being a Black creator? Was it different looking for gigs before? And is it more difficult now or easier? Explain, like anybody, everybody can just jump in, it's okay. Wait, I'm sorry. Can you um, ask the question one more time? Okay. Uh, looking for gigs or getting gigs for Black music creators, was it difficult before? Because, I mean, we're looking at a, a, an array of um, music creators or creators right now with all of yourself being on the panel. But one of the things that a lot of the artists have mentioned over the course of the last three weeks are looking for gigs as a Black creator prior to COVID or prior to the pandemic versus looking for gigs now. Has it changed? Is it different for yourselves in being producers and or creators? Is it different from being a vocalist? Because a lot of the vocalists I've talked to in the previous panel said it's a challenge before COVID getting gigs. It's still a challenge now getting gigs. Like it, it doesn't, it's not any different for black creators. So I'm asking this panel, is it? Yeah, like if I, I mean, yeah, I don't think the, the color of our skin is gonna change. So it's, that's, that's always gonna be the bar a barrier in itself, right? regardless of um, any type of pandemic or economic change, like that's always going to be there. And I think, I think we're kind of, I don't want to say used to it, but like we go into most situations already knowing that that is most likely a card that's going to be played against us. And we have to, we have to compensate in some form or another, right? So we're, it's kind of, I feel like it's built into us or regardless. Mm -hmm. um the pandemic you know logistically it, yes it's made it more difficult because like okay for me my biggest fan base is in the uk but like traveling is a nightmare like i i do not want to travel for two or three gigs like n there's no way that i want to like wow. and especially when especially when things change a lot like okay now you have to take a test when you get there um and you have to take a test or stay in a hotel and quarantine and like those things change depending on where you're going it's mm -hmm. so much of a headache and i think that time is better spent elsewhere for me personally yes, and you. just like diversifying you know so yeah so in short i i, I don't think that the the color of the skin is is compounding it or in, in any way i think it's always there it's a constant it's it's i think the pandemic in it in itself is just a new challenge Right. Okay. Thank um, you. Yeah, I definitely agree with Byron in that sense. Like, I, I'm as a young Black woman in making music in Toronto, my whole entire journey, I can honestly say, obviously, there's been hurdles and there's been, you know, things that you have to get through. But I've always been able to perform someplace. Like, I've always been able to share my art. I've always connected with other creatives. I've always, like, if, if that wasn't the case, I created my own space um, to be able to do so. And that's one thing that I really appreciate about um, being from Toronto and, like, being a Canadian artist is that we actually have a lot more spaces to be ourselves and to be able to create those environments. Um, 
than than we think. Like we we often think that like you know it's it's hard and it is and it's hard in any industry. I feel especially the creative industry, it's going to be hard. But I just feel like um, we, there is a lot of opportunity to do you like and, and to build off of that. Um, it's not like if there's a space that isn't necessarily in alignment with what you do. Um, there are, are going to be a lot of people I've always found like my tribes and my families um, in different communities and music. Um, and I've created not we expected off of the the idea that you don't have to be necessarily in alignment with what other people are doing or anything like that, but you have to be in alignment with being okay with being who you are and, and presenting that. Um, so I would say like the, the pandemic did like change things in the sense of, you know, obviously we can't gather in a super uh, huge venue to do like a live show, like how we would. Um, but I'm not going to say that there aren't opportunities for us to be creative. Um, there's even more now, I would say, than, than there were before, but there were always a lot. Like if you compare it even to the U.S., we have a lot more um, like grants and just programs, things like CMI to be involved in. Um, so I would say like it's a lot more accessible now um just for creatives as a whole um but especially as as being like a black creative i would say that there's always a space for for you mm -hmm. nice um i i will say like for me because i have like both the side of being the producer and the side of being the artist slash performer uh during the pandemic i definitely like I'm, I mean, I have a show coming up in March. The last show I did, I did something a couple weeks back. Um, so I, I felt like during the pandemic as a performing artist, like the gigs, you know, became few and far between. Mm -hmm. But as a producer, and particularly in the time that we're in right now, where there's always this, and, and I'm not one to really like continue harping on this 2%, 3%, like as far as being a female uh, producer, um, like I'm a producer at the end of the day, but the conversation a lot of times has been about that. And then not only that, like being a black female producer. So because of, you know, you know, those, those kind of like factors, I felt that there's been a lot more uh, organizations that have reached out to me and have, wanted to kind of lend a, a, a helping hand or you know have brought me on for certain things like the Bacardi campaign that happened last year and towards the end of the year I was in LA filming um, the promo video with Boy Wanda and then I went to Puerto Rico um, so that happened during the pandemic with me as a producer I still managed to slide in you know me as the artist writer um, and then I also was doing work with um, the National Art Center in Ottawa, and uh, they definitely, you know, we had like Zoom calls and just kind of chatting it up with other female producers in the world. And then they also gave me some funding to purchase some equipment. So while it was a standstill actually going physically into these different spaces, mm -hmm. I still found that. I had a lot more W's um, and dollar signs. <laughs> um, so I'm thankful and I'm grateful for that. And I'm definitely looking forward to things opening up. Uh, March 24th, Paradise Theater, y'all come out, see me perform and things and whatnot. <laughs> thanks, thanks. Plug. Shameless plug. Nice. And Marlon, what about yourself? Like um, gigs for this time period, was it more challenging, more easier? Were they were projects just come in like quickly? Cool. Definitely more challenging um, for stand up. I know for sure there was a lot of stand up comedians doing virtual shows, which I'm not a fan of. Um, if I'm going to be doing stand up, I need immediate response. I, I LOLs aren't going to do it for me on a screen. I'm sorry. <laughs> That's um, true. So it's just I, I wasn't going to do that and then get used to that and then go on stage and be just disarmed by laughter in front of my face. <laughs> yeah. I, I held out in that regard um, in terms of the podcast. 
we, like I said, we did um, a picnic because we needed to be outside and socially distanced and, and have still have all of our audience come out, um, which was an amazing day. And then we did uh, another activation with Foot Locker uh, in Chinatown uh, in one of the uh, little squares that they have there. And that was a great turnout. We also did an Eaton Center uh, activation during that time. So we just tried to um, find ways to still get it, the live shows happening, um, which for us, I, we feel like is what really ropes people into our community. Like they can hear the podcast every week, but if they don't come out and see you and still think, yeah, they're still funny, like even in person, they're funny. Mm -hmm then they're not going to really buy into you completely. So the live shows are still very important for us as well. We, that's the only way we can generate an income from the podcast other than ads, which are few and far between um, for an upcoming podcast. So that's our, that was our main bread and butter in terms of making some money. So we, we definitely had to keep the train going um, for that as well. Um, and for everything else. Yeah. Like I said, it was all, pretty much virtual, um, kind of like what we're doing right now, a lot of panels that were virtual and, and things of that sort. Um, I wouldn't say necessarily they slowed down. I think companies also found a way to pivot for influencers. Yeah. And um, yeah, it was an interesting experience. Not my favorite, but I understand obviously why it had to go that way. Yeah, yeah, yeah nice. Um, I, I just love that all of you are being very candid about how you navigated because I know a lot of artists are very frustrated on how to if they feel that they've exhausted whatever they were doing prior to the pandemic so thank you so much for sharing um, now on the topic of uh, resources and putting together events uh, and or projects, are there any grants that you used or that you've applied for, for anything that you've worked on over the last two years? So like for myself, for example, I did apply for a Factor grant and special shout out to Factor for believing in my idea. I did a, a women in the underground music space um, women who have businesses in the underground music space. And I brought five women who are working in booking, um, DJing, radio station, uh, any area that is not behind the DJ booth specifically, they, they financed or supported my idea. And I, I was overjoyed. So how about yourselves? Any thing that you applied for that you actually got and you were able to showcase in the last two years or so? None for me. I, I didn't, uh, I think I applied to one and then halfway through they started asking for way too much information and I was just like, yeah, no, I'm good. <laughs> okay. Factor, was it Factor? Uh, no, I don't think it was Factor. I think it was a black business grant that was like, just uh -huh. a bunch of, um, I guess, upper class black people that <laughs> put together. Yeah, 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 I know that one. I know, you know that, that one. one? I, I stopped that too. One. They started yeah. asking too much. I'm just like, I'll get back to this later. Bank so this account like information, SIM card, <laughs> driver's license. I'm like, this is, listen, y'all are black. Y'all are black like I'm black. You should know better. I'm not doing <laughs> too much, too much. Oh my gosh. Tia um, uh, Yeah. I, like I wouldn't like for me I wouldn't say necessarily like I mean I got some funding like I said from the National Arts Center um, but I, I didn't apply for that necessarily mm -hmm. I was already kind of like in this like little kind of like cohort or program with them right. um, 2019 though I know it's kind of pushing it a little bit over the two years 2019 I when things were kind of open more um, I did some traveling and I applied for traveling grants from like SoCan Foundation and then yeah. Factor also had, um, they called it the Songwriter Support Grant. So I applied for that and um, I received that. Um, 
yeah so it was more on the traveling because i was like listen i'm gonna be traveling where can i get some free money so, <laughs> this is canada <laughs> um wow. so, so yeah uh more on the traveling grant side okay good why i'm even asking is when you bring it up, anyone watching can be like, oh, I never heard of that. Let me go and look into it. Because sometimes you don't know what is available to you. You don't know what you're eligible for. So hearing it coming from other music creators might be enough to do a little investigation. So thank you. Um, just, just like a, a little tip. I think like what's always helpful is to start from like whatever it is you're doing and then work backwards. Don't think I need to apply for a grant. Well, what do you need to apply for a grant for? Like that would be the next question. So if you know, like for example, you wanna do like some writing sessions in Nashville, for example. Okay, that's your starting point, right? Now you can then go and look for grants that might support you being able to like, you know, pay for accommodations or whatever the case may be when you're traveling. So just start from the project itself and then work backwards in terms of like finding the grants and applying for them. Great, nice, okay, good pointer. Um, I just wanted to add that there is a government rebate. I'm not sure if it's still available, but for any creatives that do have a physical space that they are renting or occupying, um, there is a rebate that you can get returned if you were renting anywhere from like in the last three years, I believe, um, especially during COVID. It's, they essentially would help you with like rent payments. I know during the time of COVID for a while during lockdown, we were not able to uh, actually like service uh, clients and things like that. So there are government rebates if you go on the website, you know, Canada.ca. Um, I can't remember what it's called now. I think it's called literally like rent subsidy. And then there's another one. Um, but that's for any like business owners that have their own physical space. You had to have had it since like 2019, I believe, before the pandemic. You can't be like, oh, I just opened up this space last week. Like right. it has to be like um, in the last few years. But that really did help. That was something that really helped uh, me because I was kind of like, OK, I have this space. I don't want to close it. I love it but it's like I can't also conduct business at the same uh, rate that I was prior to uh, the right. pandemic just because of the restrictions so it does help you um, save in that way I believe it's like something like they pay your landlord for you so that you don't have to pay something like that I'm not sure um, but that's something worth looking into as well for any creatives that have a space that they regularly work out of right okay thanks for that wow I'm taking notes too to help share around. Yeah, I'll definitely share you the link. Like I'll log in. That's a whole process, but you know, I'll find it. I'll figure it out. Okay. Wonderful. Okay. And uh, okay, so initially when I first uh, spoke on the topic of today's panel, I brought up Bell Let's Talk. Uh, the, the launch of their campaign for 2022 was which a few weeks ago. And that brings up a very um, intense topic when it comes to mental health, especially during this time where many were very isolated. Um, I just want to speak with all of you as creators on how you were able to manage or at least have balance in your life when it comes to everyone's health and well being. Uh, to go from a very fast paced life um, in arts, meaning like you're out there networking, engaging with people, talking, performing, collaborating to like lockdown, nothing. How, how was it for you? Was it, were you able to manage easily? Do you have anything that is part of your daily practice that now you do to be able to manage that balance? Uh, feel free to share what you can. I don't expect you to say everything, but um, I'd love to share that with our community. I feel like before even the pandemic began, I've, I've done a really good job of balancing as much as balancing can be when you're an entrepreneur. People usually ask you like, are you busy today? And you you're like, I'm busy every day, all the time yeah. because you're working on your brand and you're working on, you know, growing uh, especially if you're not a millionaire yet, you know what I mean? There's really not enough time, not no time to step on the brakes. So I think it's always in the back of my mind. Um, luckily, I'm 
I do something where I, a lot of it is thought. I don't need to really <laughs> do anything in order to, um, or go someplace in order to create what I do. Um, so I was lucky in that regard. Um, but yeah, I'm, I've never been one of those people that like, oh, don't, I'm not sleeping till I'm dead or any of that stuff. Like, I listen to my body. I listen to my brain. Whenever it's time to shut off, I shut off. Like, it's just that simple. And I think with the pandemic, um, it gave people enough time to to look inwards and see if they are delegating those times correctly. And especially with people losing loved ones and, and life just looking so fragile for, for so long, uh, it gave you a deeper appreciation of the time that you have and the moments that you have. And I think you saw the effect of that with a lot of people leaving their jobs and uh, joining creative spaces or leaving their jobs and, and, and engaging in, in things that they always wanted to do and never thought they'd have an opportunity to. Um, so I think it was a blessing in that regard. I hope most people took it that way, but um, yeah, for the most part, it was, it was just balancing when to turn off things and i I've, i think i've i've done a good job with that thank you yeah no it's true it's true for, for me it was uh <laughs> you know when the pandemic hit i didn't change clothes for like weeks <laughs> i stay in the same clothes and it's just like you don't have to go out so that routine element of things was not there yeah. Aram, did, so you bathe? The did you bathe <laughs> Did you did you put the clothes in the washing machine? The no, no, no. Oh, like I, I went many days because I didn't need to. Like my you didn't need like to bathe? I'm with my fam. No, I didn't need to bathe for many days. It's not the right. same when you're like, I'm going out. I'm going right, out. Right, right. Oh, I'm gonna right, I'm right, gonna right. wear this. Like I feel good in this. When I'm at home, I feel good in my PJs. <laughs> you know, and like I'm just being real, honestly, y'all. Like yeah. Yeah. um, and so that became a kind of like a habit of just being like you know, if I'm on Zoom, I don't have to put my camera on. I'm, I'm like, I'm chilling. Yeah. But that lack of um, routine kind of crept into um, work ethic, right? Yeah, I could, my studio is at home. Yeah, I could like stumble into my studio whenever I want to, but not having to, you know, get myself fresh and done up because there's guests coming over or there's a client coming over um, really affected my work ethic. So I forced myself eventually to be like, okay, get up at eight and pretend as if you are going out to the studio or you're going to a meeting, like do that same routine and forcing myself to do that same routine, like jumps, like it, it made a world of a difference, you know, um, in, in my kind of attitude and my mental health. Um, so that was my challenge and that's how I overcame it. It was by really starting my day as if I am going to see physical people. My yeah. force, my force, wow, okay. I, yeah. I, I, I kind of second that because like I try to get myself in a habit and, and obviously like for the creators out there, some days are going to be, you know, you'll be on point, but other days you may not be on point and and I think that's okay but trying to like at least at the at the very least say I want to make this change and working towards it like one of the things that I I tried to do was a 30-day yoga challenge some of the days I was sick some of the days I was like mm, I'm not feeling this I listened to my body so but by the end of it I ended up doing 20 of the 30 days and it as a, instead of like beating myself up with that I was like you know what at least you you set you finish what you started right and then kind of similar to to Byram I try to get myself in the habit of you know I get up early take a shower put on clothes I put on kind of like clothes that looks like I'm actually like going out sometimes I would like just dress up and I'm just going to the little cafe around the corner yeah. You know, and it's just so I could feel good about myself, right? But at least getting my day started early, I I prefer to do that. Um, yeah. and take a shower, get dressed, and then yeah, go from there. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Wonderful. Denise, do you have to leave? Uh, do you have to yeah, leave? I do. I actually have to like I have a, a deadline for something at four, so I'm gonna I'm gonna okay. jump off. Okay. And, uh, it was so good talking to everybody. Oh, it was so nice to have you here. Wow, thank you. Yeah, everybody, please stay well. Love. 
Peace yes, and too. oh yes, Tanisha, Marlon, hey. um, Byron. Bye. Great chatting. Okay, and uh, Tanisha, what about you? Any anything you went through in the early months or years, and then how you were able to navigate through, or any tips and tricks you have to like make it through? It's, it's a kind of like a stagnant feeling, you know, that everyone was having at the beginning. Um, yeah, I, I definitely took it hard in the beginning. Uh, I moved across the country. <laughs> um, I moved to the West Coast. I just got very like stifled. I started to feel like, okay, I've kind of done most things that I wanted to do. Um, and I just hit a, like a wall. I was like, okay, we have to stay inside, but I'm so not used to staying inside. Uh, there was a point I was working out of my studio every single day. So I was like seeing clients for the whole entire day and then like crashing, doing it again the next morning. Um, so moving to the West Coast really taught me to like slow down mm -hmm. and take deep breaths and really like take in my surroundings. Um, having a schedule was something that was very important. Like I started working at a studio over here and in Toronto, the studios, like I have my own studio. So we were open 24 hours a day, like all times of night, all times of morning, all times of night. Here it's like, they kind of close, like after 10 p.m. everything's closed for the most part uh, so it's like going home and really having that time of like wow people have bedtimes they eat breakfast and they like you know take their time with things that was a real um adjustment for me it really taught me to be like a human being to be honest um and not just like be on the go um with that though came a sort of guilt um, especially in the beginning, it was like, okay, you're having a great time chilling, like playing Sims, like relaxing. <laughs> what about the work? Like, what about your records? Your records are not writing themselves. Like, right. um, so it became like, kind of like I had a battle with myself of like, okay, you need to be writing though. Um, the thing with me is I'm always in the studio. So I was always writing, but it was like for other people and for other projects and for things. And it wasn't like, okay, sit down and write your own music right now, like do your own thing. Um, so uh, that was an adjustment. Um, I would say that something also that I like went through was like a super anti-social phase because I started falling in love with like, just like trees and nature and just my surroundings and being in my own head that like, I did not want to talk to people. Like the whole texting and the digital, let's FaceTime and all that. I was like, no, <laughs> like how yeah. you just leave me alone. And so we can see each other. Well, we can see each other, it's cool. Um, but so I had to like kind of teach myself to reintegrate into society and like be a people person. Um, Cause I always have been like, I always have like worked with people and been cool with it. Um, but when you really get into your own like shell it just becomes like, oh man, you gotta get anxiety. Like I have to speak to people, I have to go outside. Like, um, so I'm definitely working on that now especially like moving to the West Coast. It's a whole different vibe than Toronto. Um, so like I'm used to going outside and seeing my people and like we just do whatever. But here it's just very much so like reservations and, and lunch dates and so um it's, it's are you in vancouver yes yeah vancouver is beautiful yeah, it's, it's, it's so yeah. chill it's, it's sometimes too chill the yeah <laughs> that's my problem like you know where is the yeah. toronto yeah. i need the yeah um i visited definitely i've been home like a million times so before like everybody's like did you really move or are you just gonna be here like every second um because sometimes you need that like sometimes i'm like yo where's the raw raw like i'm a little bored yeah, yeah, no rah rah in Vancouver. Um, but yeah, so it's it's an adjustment, but I I definitely love it. Like, um, I think that it's come with good and it's like a bittersweet feeling. This whole pandemic has definitely been bittersweet. Right, right. Well, thanks for that. Yeah, Vancouver is beautiful. I I love it, but I also love being from Toronto. It's like it's like that in the middle thing. I I like both. Me too. I've been, trust me, out here, the people, like, I've been teaching them about Scarborough. I'm like, you guys are a little, <laughs> you need a little adjustments. Like, I don't know. 
um but yeah it's beautiful like just seeing the mountains that it's really taught you to slow down and enjoy life like um i feel like coming from a big city that we do it's like we forget simple things like just go outside take deep breaths take walks i've spent so much more time with my family um and just kind of showing them a different side of canada even yeah. being a creative we i've been across north america i've been on tours i've been to america lots of times but i never traveled canada like i never knew that vancouver was this beautiful until like literally the pandemic when i was like okay cool i could travel there still i'm going <laughs> um so yeah it was um i encourage like canadian creatives to really tap into the different provinces that we do have i get it it seems like there's not much going on there but we can actually change that because like otherwise toronto is just going to be like our only place in canada that people think things happen yeah yeah nice it's a good plug for vcu <laughs> wonderful yeah um so we're we're slowly coming to a close with our um, our discussion and uh, to keep it on the topic of black music in Canada and music um I wanted to ask you uh who are your musical influences I want to go with Canada first and then just everything because we've got a lot of great Canadian artists for like a long time now so anyone um, I can go first. I personally love Tamia. Um, growing up, that was like, I was like, wow, she's Canadian. She sings, uh, you know, I, I'm so into it. Um, even Divine Brown, like these are the, the yes. vocalists that like we would listen to um, and get the idea that like we can do this. Like, you know, there are R&B artists, especially women. Uh, Tamia definitely was like my fave, I would say, yeah. um, from Canada. Um, but everybody's been super inspiring, to be honest. Even seeing Cardi's journey and like, even like Tanisha Scott was super inspiring to me because we have the same name. And like, when I was very young, I would see her like going to America and doing the different um, choreography for different artists. Um, and that was before, like we had seen a lot of the success with like Drake and with a lot of the people that we have now. Mm -hmm. um, so that was inspiring. It always kind of taught me from a young age that we can do this, that like the world is out there and it's not just like our city. Right. Um, so I really love those people, I would say. Um, even right now, though, we have some dope artists coming up. Like, we got Savannah Ray. I'm super excited about um, her journey, um, as well as um, I love, um, yeah, I think that's like my Canadian list, I would say, right now. Um, but Jasmine Sullivan, we always have to talk about Jasmine Sullivan. Yeah. We're super excited to have her back. Um, and just like everybody, Drake has been super uh, lit. Just like everything that he's done, obviously, has been super inspiring to like, even on the business side, just knowing that we can build things in Canada and have them work. Mm -hmm. um, I think he's been a great example of that. Not even, not even like so much his career um, musically, but like the fact that he's been able to build um, his own business in uh, with his success has been super inspiring uh, just to me. Uh, so yeah, that would be my list, I would think. But there's so many, like, I don't know. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I think um, for me on the music side in terms of Canada, like obviously it started um with cardinal for me personally i th i feel like he just he does so much for toronto beyond music that it's like it's hard to just <laughs> put him under that umbrella yeah um i feel like he gave us an identity very very early on with bacardi slang and old time killing like it was an acknowledgement that i'm okay i there is a jamaican thing going on in the city right like this is i'm not just dreaming it like this is actually happening and it, it connected the city um, in terms of that. And I feel like obviously we, we could talk about the Drake's weekends, but I think Toronto's R&B scene is probably the most elite thing that we have going for us um, that no people aren't really attributing to Toronto. Mm -hmm. um, when you talk about just the dark sounds and the brooding sounds in R&B now, a lot of that comes from Toronto. A lot of that comes from PND and, the weekend and a lot of the things those guys were doing um and right now like john vinyl he had probably top three project of, of any genre last year um uh layla day she's still doing amazing things, yeah, things we, had her, we had her on week two yeah layla day yeah. she's killing it on tiktok as well so like 
you have so many different artists daniel caesar sean leon sean leon was just on donda one and two um he's on donda two as a feature now and he's he, what he's been building um in terms of his community and, and his music uh has been just out of this world for years so it's great to see him finally getting his just due um and him and and daniel do a lot of writing together daniel caesar obviously just got nominated for grammys and stuff like that so it's it's great to see where i feel like the r&b scene is going right now i think the r&b scene is so strong yeah they just need the proper avenues to get out and 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 have their music reach the masses because if they honestly if the world heard john vinyl's project last year he'd be a superstar like it's just about it's just about getting people to hear it you know what i mean right Byron? Byron, your favorites hello Byron. i think he went away for a minute um well in terms of my favorites uh oh Byron, you're there Are you, oh, oh sorry i thought i, yeah. I thought i clicked it yeah <laughs> oscar peterson for me is like you know, I have so many LPs like vinyl of Oscar Peterson. And to me, he's like just the greatest. Like the way he plays is so unique. Like he has such a cool style that's that I just love. And I love sampling it too. Mm -hmm. um, but, you know, he's Canadian and, you know, he's a legend. Um, but as far as like uh, new newer artists and producers, Junior T's been putting out some really amazing stuff lately. Yeah. Um, and, and and like I'm able to like I've been doing some mixes for him too, so I'm able to hear the projects earlier on in the in their in the process. And <laughs> even early early on, it's just like really some really dope stuff. So um, yeah, that's that's who's inspiring me lately. <laughs> Right. Yeah, he's a vibe. Yeah. <laughs> vibes. Didn't didn't he win um did he Polaris win a Polaris Prize? Prize? Yeah, he won a Polaris Prize a year or two ago. Studio yeah. Monk. Yeah. It's a good album. Um in terms of my favorites, I mean I mentioned that I, you know, I really loved hip hop from years past so I, I agree with marlon cardinal was one of my favorites um, when he dropped his very first singles and albums um i also love tara chase tara chase she's from nova scotia wicked mc i don't know if she's putting out music now but she's really really good and then um my personal favorite in terms of like uh r and i love love Mary J. Blige. I mean, yes, she's American, but I feel like with her fusing together hip hop and R&B, she's created a kind of genre that now we hear as like regular R&B music. So you get the hip hop flavor, but then you get the vocals and that 70s R&B mixed together. And I love that so much. She's my favorite, my favorites. Yeah. Well, now, where can we find all of you online for other music creators or creators to look for you, perhaps to collaborate with you? What are your websites? Are you on Instagram? Where can I find you? You can find me at that dude McFly on everything. Okay. I'm at beatchild.com and beatchild music on IG. Okay, Be Child Music, okay. And I am at Tanisha Music everywhere and N-W-Y-E dot C-O. Okay, wonderful. And that concludes panel number four. I would love to thank you all for joining us today at Songwriters Association of Canada for this wonderful discussion. I wish you all the best as you move forward in your career. And thank you for sharing like how you've navigated uh, this time period. It's val very valuable information. Thank you. Thank you.
All right, so we have a special treat for everyone today. So for panel number four, um, it's how to stay creative, motivated, and connected now as a music creator with a virtual showcase by producer songwriter Denise Dion. And uh, we're very excited to have Denise play some snippets of some of the new material. So welcome again, Denise. Hey, hey. Hey. And I just want to congratulate you on your latest drop home run. It's very, very nice. Um, Thank you. When, when did it come out? Uh, I came out on the 18th of uh, February. All right. Mm -hmm. And tell us a little bit about that track. Like, how did it come about? Um, how long did it take you to work on it? And could you play us a little snippet of that? Sure, sure. Um, so that song, it's funny because I think I was working on something else and um, the main instrumentation that kind of leads the way is like these, these the string, it's kind of like this staccato string. Um, dun, 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 and I, I, sometimes a lot of ideas for me flow when I actually leave my like studio kind of set up space. And so I was in the kitchen and then that melody just kind of popped into my head. And then I just like kind of went back upstairs and laid it down. And sometimes when the melody comes, I don't necessarily know what the instrument is, but um, it ended up being those strings. And I'd say, um, I, I wanna say that the song took maybe like a week and a half. Um, yeah, my, my process, sometimes it's like all in one where I'm, like arranging, um, sequencing and writing all at once and just kind of like, just letting it flow that way. So the words will come. And then also in terms of the production, sometimes I, you know, rearrange production once I have the vocals in there. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, but it was, it was really fun to, you know, get to work on that track and I'm glad it's a hit for you. <laughs> oh yeah, no, it's good, it's good. Um, what, can you play us maybe your favorite part of that track? Uh, sure. I think probably my favorite part is the end because. Okay, okay. Yeah, yeah, because the ending is where I just kind of did, uh, like just, I just did a little bit of something to it to make people kind of move in a different way. Yes. Okay, I'm just going to cue it up and then okay. I, let's see. Uh, okay. So, oh, you need to enable me to screen share. Okay. All right. Okay. All right. Don't you? Throw my heart away, yeah. This could be no hit. Right. Faces falling low and out. I'm so fucking I'm so lucky that's why, why, why. This could be no hit. Right. This could be a. Oh, 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 Nice, nice, nice. What uh, what programs do you use to like build your sound? Is this for the production? Uh, yeah, for the production side of things, I mainly use um, Reason, which uh, is not as common of a a um, program for a lot of producers because most of the time when you ask a producer, they'll say like Logic, okay. FL Studio, or Ableton. So Reason is it's it's quiet and but kept you know so uh but it to me it's really about just being able to use whatever is in front of you to the best of you know your ability so it doesn't really matter what the program is right 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 nice very polished um mm -hmm. can you play um something that we haven't heard like a like a snippet of something unique that you're playing with now 
Sure. So I actually have. Um, I feel like I'm my... in the studio with you. <laughs> <laughs> um, I'll play a little bit of uh, one of the tracks off of. So I have an EP dropping March 25th. Okay. And uh, yeah, so it's a five track EP and mm -hmm. it includes Home Run on it. Okay. And I'll, I'll, I'll play a snippet of one of those tracks for you. All right. And this one's more of a, a down tempo one. Dion got that sauce. You call the shots getting loaded. Drinking and drinking, never slowing down Say you want that brown liquor You want it to go down quicker Sip into the face But tonight this love is fading We've been drunk for too long This feels so wrong How did we get here? Mistakes and you make yours too, baby. And I change and you change and we broke the rules. And now here we are, pour another round. But it's the same old thing, same old thing. Pour another round. But it's the same old thing, same old thing, yeah. It's the same old thing, same old. Wow, very radio there friendly. That is nice. It, it's it's radio ready for sure. It's really nice. Oh, thank you. Um, wow. I like I because I read your bio and I, the way you wrote it or the way it was written was like uh, explaining that it has like the elements of hip hop, R and B, pop. I can hear that. It's very good. Yeah, and I um, honestly, with this project, I, I really want to give people a taste of, you know, the music that I like to make. Mm -hmm. And I mean, obviously, like it changes over time in terms of like what inspires me. But yeah. um, like at the end of the day, you know, like I just want there to be a certain feeling mm -hmm. and it could be a happy feeling, could be a sad feeling. Um, but on this particular EP, you know, it's it's a it's a mix, and yeah. I I there's you know different genres. Like one of the tracks on here is actually like a house R and B track. Um, this yeah. is my favorite. I love house. Okay, okay. Well, if you want, I could give a snippet of that one too. You know what? Let's do it. Let's do it for our house heads. Okay, folks, you okay. heard it, folks. You heard it here first at SEC. This is some nice stuff. Nice. All right. So I'll give this and then, you know, got to go listen to it like everybody else. March 25th. March 25th. Yep. There you go. This one is called Loving You. Okay. <laughs> Take my time. your vocals it's all me it's all me 
this entire project. Um, you know, like this this project, I'm proud of this project because I, you know, took on the role of literally like being the producer, mm -hmm. uh, being the writer, being mm -hmm. the artist on it. I also mixed like all of the tracks. Um, going forward, you know, I'm definitely looking to expand on that. Um, but it was pretty fun for me to just kind of like do that on my own. And uh, yeah, it was, it was it was a lot of fun. It was interesting. Nice, nice. So should we expect to hear a wide variety of sounds on that uh, EP? Well, you can expect to hear as wide a variety of from five songs, you know, like, <laughs> I, I, you know, and then <laughs> down the road, I'll give you more. Yes. But for now, um, yeah, for now, it's uh, going to be those five tracks. And I'd say, yeah, like you got the house R&B. One of the tracks is kind of got like a Caribbean feel to it. Yes. yes. Um, another one is also kind of has a Caribbean feel, but. I use a lot of like synths in it. So it also kind of feels like, I don't want to say eighties, but the synths that I use kind of just take me back and gives me like some oh. sort of nostalgia in a sense. So that's, yeah, that's I'm, I'm looking forward to everybody like hearing it yeah. and um, yeah. Well, it's perfectly, it's, good. it's perfectly timed to drop with everything opening up because there are a lot of events and outdoor uh, patio parties lined up i saw everything pop up when they announced that we're open again so i expect mm -hmm. to hear this all over it's very very good yeah i actually have a, a show um on the 24th the day before actually okay. so i'm going to be performing i'm going to be performing um most of these songs live okay and what what is yeah. it what is that show it is um, the Academy Presents, and it's like one night. It's just a bunch of R&B artists. Oh, um, yeah. Um, I uh, I got Layla Day. Her. Layla Day's. Okay, okay, I got yeah, tickets. Layla for Day will be on that. Kane, um, yeah, Academy. yeah, yeah. So it's it's the same people um, that put on that show, and uh, they're just having it's basically like a ladies' night. So it's myself. Uh, Layla Day, Stasia Daniels, and Joya. Okay, wonderful. All Canadian. Mm -hmm. and all Canadian. So it's a cat, the Academy Presents. Yeah, also, I mean, if you go on my bio, I have like a, a little, like, I have a link where you can kind of access the tickets. Okay, um, where, where do we find you online? Uh, Instagram, you know, I'm okay. slowly moving into the TikTok world. It's bear with me. It's slow, but it's happening. Okay. Um, and honestly, if you search Denise Dion and just make sure Dion is D E I O N, mm -hmm. you search that uh, I'm bound to pop up. Okay. 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 Thank you so much for sharing this with us. This is, this is exciting as the season's changing and outside is open <laughs> it's gonna be wicked to hear these tunes yeah yeah i just went to a show the other day and it was it was just it was exciting to just kind of be in a room with like people again yeah um, so can't wait wonderful wonderful thank you so much for your time and uh we look forward to hearing more of your collaborations your music for the coming months and years thank you Yes, thank you for having me.